I'm walking down a very overgrown track. Some time ago, I spotted, well, it's in a small brook, and I spotted some sticklebacks and what I thought looked like loach. Anyway, that was in the close season for the rivers. Then of course we had the lockdown, so no fishing, but it's always been on my radar at the back of my mind and that's where I'm heading today. I've noticed a, a single stickleback and I've dropped the bait in. It's playing with it, but unfortunately not taking it any further. What I do find with this particular species is that they respond better when there's a, a number of them. The competition for the food definitely intensifies their desire to take the maggot. It's very, very overgrown, very wild, very shallow as well. It's the furthest I've ever fished upstream for fish. And I doubt very much whether there will be anything other than the mini species, but you never know, do you? And that's the great thing about places like this. You don't know what you're going to encounter. Anyway, I can spot my maggot. It's on the, the bed of the brook. And every time I put it out again, the aforementioned fish goes and has a little look, circles it a few times now and then he, he disappears. So I think I'm going to draw a blank on this first spot. I moved to another, well I can't really call it a swim, a spot I suppose, and I couldn't see anything, but there's lots of branches in the water, so I knew that there was a good possibility of a, a fish hiding away somewhere. There it is. So male stickleback, as you can see there, they have the name red butchers in the breeding season. Then they lose that color towards the end and that one has still got the very distinctive red. And of course, I'm holding the fish very, very carefully. Fantastic. I'm about to cast out, don't know if you can see there, I've got a small shot and then the hook and a maggot. I have actually thrown one maggot in just to see the reaction. And there are some very small sticklebacks out there. So they've had a, a good breeding season anyway. Cast out again and the bait has settled on the bed of the brook and immediately there's a, there's a tiny stickleback on and then a bigger one has just moved in. It's seen the smaller ones off. Oh, didn't quite have it on there. I don't want them to swallow the hook. That's not what I want to do, but I've got this one. And can I get it up through all these branches? <laughs> I think I... I think I can. It's just come off right down there in the margin. So I'm going to reach down and hopefully I'll be back in a moment or two with that stickleback. It was in the water, but there were, were some stones as it were around it, so it couldn't get out. There it is. As you can see, that's a, a decent sized stickleback, especially when you consider the size of the brook that it's come from. I've uh, cast out again. You can see what happens as soon as you, the bait hits the, the bed of the brook. The small fish, very small fish, probably just twice as big as the maggot if that, they're on it straight away. As happened that first time, the uh, bigger stickleback came in, saw them off, and then he devoured the bait himself. However, I don't think this is going to be uh, as productive. Mind you, another fish has come around, it's circling. It's going for the, it's going for the bait. 
fantastic. You can watch it in the clear water. And it is clear. And also we're talking about water that is no more than, than perhaps six inches deep in the deep parts. The rest of it, you could walk across it no problem at all and just get the sole of your shoes wet. Oh, they've, they've done a disappearing act. It will be a case of stalking these fish. It will be a case of being mobile, making your way along and dropping into whatever hole you can. Tell you what, though, I'm not giving up on this particular spot just now. I've only just started to fish and already I'm stung by the nettles. I've had branches in my head. I'm, I've got a few cuts and bruises on there. I'm kneeling down in the, in the sand alongside the brook. I'll go back dirty. But I'll tell you something, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Fantastic. Whether I'm after those big carp like I did three nights last week, four, or I'm on this tiny little brook that's not even a recognised waterway. In terms of fishing anyway, it's all fishing and it's all good. It's gone quiet. I might have one more cast because the initial cast does create interest, but then it's like chucking a big lure into your swim initially you can stimulate the interest and the curiosity of the fish but there comes a point maybe six seven casts in or whatever you actually kill the swim and i'm going to have one more cast here to see if i can connect with this uh, elusive stickleback that's been coming around and circling the baits like a great white shark i suppose he's the great white shark of this brook isn't he he's the king of the brook I did have the fish on, but it came off just in the water. I caught uh, a little branch there. I'm gonna get rid of that. That's probably killed the, the spot off now. As you can see, it's, it's very wild. Wild is not the word, but I'm still gonna have another, another chuck. They're not, they're not fish for. So they probably don't know what's really going on at the moment. At some point they'll, uh, they'll become aware that it's not natural. Let me just have a, have a chuck out though. It's important I uh, see, the, see the bait as well. But I think this may have uh, died a death now. As far as the fish are concerned, time to move upstream and see if I can find another spot. the brambles now I've got them wrapped around me but I'm happy to say that I've caught my third fish I'm going to have another cast well it took me long enough to get here there's a, a channel and it doesn't matter whether you're on a small brook or a mighty river it's always good to visit when the water's low because you get to see the bottom you get to determine the features and I, well, I've got about three or four sticklebacks out there right now four or five sticklebacks that's a good sign because it means I'll probably be very competitive oh he's going he's going on a run there but I've uh, landed that one don't know if you can see there I think you can another another nice fish baits out again and as has been the pattern each cast so far 
the small fish come in and then the bigger sticklebacks see them off. However, on this occasion, although that happened just, it's now gone very, very quiet. I can see the maggot wriggling around on the bed of the brook. There are fish out there, but they've been spooked for some reason. It's great watching though, fantastic fun. And it doesn't matter what you're fishing for, what venue you're on, the reality is that watercraft is an important part of angling. And this for me is in some ways watercraft at its finest the cutting edge and, and it's it's so fascinating watching the fish out there how they respond to the bait I'm in with some hazel trees here and as you can see the nuts are beginning to take shape already. Although we're in July, the summer, the autumn isn't far behind and the seasons do merge. You don't go to bed one night when it's summer and wake up the next day when it's autumn. They do overlap and life itself has seasons just like nature and very rarely do we go from one to the other seamlessly and in an instant. Like the lesson that we can learn from this hazel nut that's blowing in the wind there. One season, summer, will be on its way soon and another autumn will take its place. I'm back where I started in terms of walking the track goes without saying I thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm here in the middle of the day. I would like to return perhaps late evening and explore the possibility of a loach. Anyway, as they say, watch this space. <laughs>